The island of Sodor is surrounded by beautiful blue sea. It has fields of green and sandy yellow beaches. There are rivers, streams and lots of trees where the birds sing. There are windmills and a coal mine and docks where visitors to the island arrive. The island also has lots and lots of railway lines. Who's that? puffing down the track. It's Thomas. Hello, Thomas. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the island of Sodor. It was a baking hot summer on the island of Sodor. The sun was shining brightly. James and Toby were taking the children to the seaside. It was a wonderful job. All the engines liked seeing the children's happy faces, and they loved hearing them cheer when they saw the sea. Thomas wished he was taking the children to the seaside, but Thomas was taking a big tank of raspberry syrup to the ice cream factory. Down on the beach, it was very hot, and the ice cream lady had run out of ice cream. So when Thomas arrived at the ice cream factory, the factory manager was waiting for him. We have to make lots more ice cream, he cried. You must go and get the cream, the chocolate, and the strawberries. Thomas was disappointed. He had lots to collect, and he wanted to take the children to the seaside. If we get everything in time, said Thomas's driver, we can still take some children. So Thomas rushed to the dairy. He collected the cream and he puffed quickly away. Next, Thomas had to collect some strawberries. So he raced through the countryside to Farmer McCall's. Then Thomas had to stop for James. Out of the way, snorted James. Passenger train coming through. James's carriages were full of laughing children. They were going to the seaside. Why does James get to take the children, moaned Thomas. At last, the crossing was clear and Thomas puffed away. <laughs> If I'm quick, I can still take some of the children, he puffed. So Thomas raced as fast as he could. Soon, Thomas arrived at Farmer McCall's. Please, be quick, Thomas panted. The farm workers loaded his trucks. Before long, they were filled with plump, ripe strawberries. Thank you, Thomas chuffed and he raced away. Next, he had to go to the chocolate factory. Thomas hurried through the baking sun. I've still got time to take some children to the seaside, he panted. Thomas puffed faster and faster. His wheels clattered and his pistons pumped. But he puffed so fast, the signalman didn't change the points in time. Thomas raced down the wrong track. Bother, cried Thomas. Thomas had to reverse slowly and carefully back to the point. Then he had to wait while Toby went past. Toby was taking more children to the seaside. They were having a wonderful time. Everyone gets to take the children except me, moaned Thomas. At last, the signalman changed the points. Thomas reversed back onto the track. And soon, he was on his way once again.
When Thomas arrived at the chocolate factory, it was very late. Hurry up, cried Thomas. If I'm quick, I might still get to take some children. The workmen loaded Thomas's trucks as fast as they could. They were soon filled with heaps of chocolatey cocoa powder. Thomas was ready to go. But the shunters hadn't released the brakes on the trucks. Thomas pulled as hard as he could, but the trucks wouldn't move. I have to hurry, puffed Thomas. He heaved, he huffed, and he puffed, and at last, the coupling broke. Thomas shot forward. Cocoa powder flew everywhere. Now I'll never get to take the children, puffed Thomas. After a long time, Thomas's trucks were ready. The yard manager had released the brakes and Thomas chuffed carefully out of the yard. Finally, the track turned left past the old church. Thomas arrived at the ice cream factory. He thought his job was nearly done, but he was wrong. The factory manager was waiting for him. The ice cream will soon be ready, he said. You must take it to the seaside for me. Thomas was very disappointed. He wished he could take the children to the seaside instead. He wanted to hear them cheer when they saw the sea. Thomas puffed along the coast to the seaside. I wish I was taking the children, sighed Thomas. Percy was waiting at the seaside station, and so were lots of children. They all cheered as Thomas pulled into the station. Thomas was surprised. Why are all the children cheering, puffed Thomas. They're cheering for you laughed Percy. They've been waiting for the ice cream. The children were delighted to see Thomas and delighted to eat the ice cream. Thomas loved seeing the children laugh and cheer. The fat controller was waiting with the children. Today you have worked extra hard, said the fat controller. You are a really useful engine. Delivering ice cream is a fun job after all, puffed Thomas. He was very happy. The island of Sodor is surrounded by beautiful blue sea. It has fields of green and sandy yellow beaches. There are rivers, streams and lots of trees where the birds sing. There are windmills and a coal mine and docks where visitors to the island arrive. The island also has lots and lots of railway lines. Who's that puffing down the track? It's Thomas. Hello, Thomas. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the island of Sodor. All the fat controller's engines like to look clean, bright and shiny. They love being washed down and having their brass polished until it gleams. James was in the workshop being repainted. He was beside himself with joy. James thought being repainted meant he was special. The workmen painted and polished for hour upon hour. Then with new paint shining, brass twinkling, and blacking black, James returned to Tidmouth's sheds. Aren't I a beautiful red? He asked the others. No wonder the fat controller thinks I'm special. But Percy was worried. He wasn't being repainted, and he wasn't red. Does this mean the fat controller doesn't think I'm special? He asked. Looking splendid is not the same as being really useful, said Thomas firmly. But best of all is being really useful and looking splendid, like me, said James cheerfully. 
Before Thomas could say anything else, James closed his eyes and fell happily asleep. The next morning, all the engines were very busy. Percy was working at the coal plant. Thomas and Emily were taking passengers up and down the branch lines. Gordon was pulling the express. The fat controller came to see James. He told him to join Percy at the coal plant at once. The coal trucks must reach Brendam docks before the boat sails, so no dilly-dallying, he said. Yes, sir, said James, and he set off at once. But James didn't go straight to the coal plant. He decided to go by the canal instead. Then he could see himself in the water for yard after yard after yard. Magnificent, he puffed. James had forgotten what the fat controller had said. At the coal yard, Percy was working as hard as he could, but he was falling behind. The line of trucks was getting longer and longer and the yard manager was getting crosser and crosser. Where could James be? James was still enjoying himself, but there was no one around to share his fun, so he headed for Wellsworth Station. But as James pulled into Wellsworth Station, Gordon and the Express were pulling out. The passengers had gone. Bother, said James. He was disappointed and he left the station. James headed straight for the branch lines. James saw Thomas. Look at me, he puffed. Don't I look fine? You should be at work, called Thomas. But James didn't listen to Thomas. James was enjoying being James. Percy wasn't enjoying being Percy. He was trying his hardest, but the trucks were being very naughty. Poor Percy was almost worn out. What will happen to the order now? cried the yard manager. When James rolled into the coal mines, it was late in the afternoon. Percy was cross. So was the yard manager. To make up for lost time, he said, you must take an extra long line of trucks to the docks. James was delighted. The docks were always bustling with engines and people. It's the place to be seen, he said. The trucks are being very naughty, warned Percy. But James wasn't listening. James puffed along, looking forward to being seen. But the trucks were naughtier than ever. They rocked and rolled and crashed and bashed. James's face was soon covered in soot. Going downhill, the trucks wiggled and giggled. James had to put his brakes on with a jolt. Coal tumbled out of the trucks, landing on James. James was cross and biffed the trucks as hard as he could. More coal flew out. Now James didn't want to be seen. He was as dirty as he had ever been. But on his way to the docks, he kept passing his friends. He passed Emily. Wood and Thomas. Thomas thought the only red thing left on James was his face. James trundled into Brendam Docks. He hoped no one would see him. But Gordon was at the docks with the express. He could not believe his eyes. 
He thought James was the grubbiest, grimiest, dustiest, dirtiest engine he had ever seen. Percy arrived safely with the last of the trucks. I like your new coat of paint, he puffed cheekily. You do look splendid. James knew he should have listened. He didn't feel splendid anymore. But for the first time all day, James could hear clearly. He could hear the sound of the trucks giggling at him. And despite feeling foolish, even James had to smile. The island of Sodor is surrounded by beautiful blue sea. It has fields of green and sandy yellow beaches. There are rivers, streams and lots of trees where the birds sing. There are windmills and a coal mine and docks where visitors to the island arrive. The island also has lots and lots of railway lines. Who's that puffing down the track? It's Thomas. Hello, Thomas. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the island of Sodor. It was a busy, bustling day on the island of Sodor. All over the island, steam engines and diesel engines were happily working together. The fat controller came to see Thomas. The quarry has an important order to fill, said the fat controller. I need an engine that is both useful and reliable. I won't let you down, sir, whistled Thomas proudly. But when Thomas arrived at the quarry, he had a nasty surprise. Oh, it's you, oil diesel. What are you doing here? I'm here to help Mavis, puffed Thomas proudly. Steamies can't help, not like a diesel, he sniffed. That's not true said Thomas crossly, and he began working at once. But Diesel was soon up to his old tricks. First, he shunted Thomas under the hopper. Cinders and ashes, spluttered Thomas. Then, when Thomas let off steam, Diesel sniffed loudly. What's that horrible smell, he cried. Oh, it's just a stinky old steam engine. How rude, exclaimed Thomas. No wonder the fat controller is thinking of scrapping steamies. I don't believe you, huffed Thomas. But he was upset. That night, Thomas stayed at the quarry, but he couldn't sleep. What if Diesel is right? Thomas said sadly. What if the Fat Controller scraps all of us? Thomas was worried. The next day, Salty had arrived. Ahoy there, me eyes. Fresh Diesel from the mainland. After he had been refueled, Diesel's engine started to rev faster and faster. Aha, he chuckled. This new fuel makes my axles tingle. Coal doesn't make my axles tingle, sighed Thomas. I wish I could have fresh fuel. Even Mavis was excited by the new fuel. Oh my, she said. Thomas was feeling left out. Soon Diesel was showing off. I'm the fastest engine in the world, he boasted. Look at me go! Suddenly, Diesel's engine coughed. Then it started to splutter. Black, smelly smoke billowed from his exhaust. I feel sick, wailed Diesel. Mavis started billowing smoke too. 
so do I, she groaned. The quarry manager was upset. It's the new fuel, he cried. Water must have leaked into the tanks. Soon, all the other diesels had broken down. Harry, Bert, even Salty had ground to a halt. So the fact controller telephoned the quarry manager. And the quarry manager came to see Thomas. You are to collect fresh diesel from the fuel depot. Right away, sir, whistled Thomas. And he steamed out of the quarry as fast as he could. At last he arrived at the fuel depot. Give me all the clean fuel you've got, Thomas cried. This is an emergency. We'll soon have you loaded, said the workman. Thomas was soon loaded with trucks carrying fuel drums. The fuel drums were very heavy. Thomas pushed with all his might. His pistons creaked and his wheels squeaked. And he kept on puffing. Thomas trundled all over the island with fresh fuel for everybody. For Salty, for Harry, and for Bert. Thomas was feeling very tired, but he still had one more delivery to make. At the quarry, all work had stopped. Diesel was as green as a leaf. Mavis was feeling very glum. Then they heard a wonderful noise. It was Thomas. He steamed into the quarry with one final puff. I made it, he cried. Mavis and Diesel had all the bad fuel drained out of their engines and all the good clean fuel poured in. Marvellous, sighed Diesel. Thank you, Thomas, purred Mavis. Soon, the quarry was clattering with the sound of work. And finally, the important job was done. The fat controller arrived on board Percy. Well done, Thomas boomed the fat controller. You have saved the day. You are a really useful engine and a credit to the railway. Thank you, sir, puffed Thomas proudly. And even Diesel had to admit that Thomas is a very special engine. Even if he is a steamy. The island of Sodor is surrounded by beautiful blue sea. It has fields of green and sandy yellow beaches. There are rivers, streams and lots of trees where the birds sing. There are windmills and a coal mine and docks where visitors to the island arrive. The island also has lots and lots of railway lines. Who's that? puffing down the track. It's Thomas. Hello, Thomas. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the island of Sodor. It was a beautiful autumn day on the island of Sodor. All the engines were working very hard. The fat controller came to Tidmouth Sheds. He had exciting news. Gordon is to take the new mayor of Sodor on a special tour of the island, he announced. Gordon was thrilled. 
But then he had a thought. Who will take the express, sir? he asked. The other engines were excited. Pulling the express was an important job. Everyone wanted to be chosen, but the Fat Controller chose Emily. When the Fat Controller left, Emily was very happy, but Gordon wasn't impressed. The express is the longest passenger train on the island, he sniffed. I always cross the island twice by tea time. You'll never do that. I've got big wheels and I'll do my best, said Emily. Big wheels don't make a big engine, boasted Gordon. Everyone knows I'm the best. Thomas thought Gordon was showing off. Twice before tea time, he puffed. That will be hard. But Emily wasn't listening to Thomas. I'm going to be as good as Gordon, she said eagerly, and she steamed away as fast as she could. Emily puffed into Knapford Station. She was looking forward to taking the express, but it was very, very heavy. Bus, man, buffers, she gasped as she slowly pulled out of the station, but she pulled away too soon and left the brake coach behind. Emily puffed with all her might. She was determined to be fast. Emily crossed the island once in good time. I am as good as Gordon, she puffed proudly. Emily had to wait for Edward at the crossing. Edward went as fast as he could, but it wasn't fast enough for Emily. Hurry up, slow coach, she cried, or you will make me late. Edward felt sad, but Emily just steamed on. Emily stopped in Maithwaite Station. The express was a guaranteed connection with Bertie the bus. But Bertie hadn't arrived. He'd had a flat tire and was running late. Emily tried to wait. She counted to ten twice, but she felt as if her boiler would burst. I'm going to be the slowest engine on Sodor, she cried, and it's not my fault. And she puffed away. When Bertie arrived, Emily had already left. Emily needed to take on water, but James was at the water tower. He was pulling the slow goods train. Emily wanted to go first. It doesn't matter if you are late, she said. You must wait your turn, said James crossly. Express trains don't wait, said Emily. And she left without taking on water. Emily went faster than ever. Her carriages rocked and rolled, and her passengers were biffed and bumped and bounced. Finally, Emily could see Brendam docks up ahead. Twice before tea time, she puffed happily, I am as good as Gordon. Then there was trouble. Emily slowed down. What's happening to me, she cried. She went slower and slower. Emily had run out of water. She huffed and puffed, but she had no steam left. Finally, Emily came to a complete stop. The Fat Controller arrived on board James. He was very cross. You should have waited, said the Fat Controller, and now you have caused confusion and delay. You left the brake coach, stranded Bertie's passengers, and bumped your carriages. You must learn to be more patient. Emily knew the Fat Controller was right. She felt very bad. She was only trying to be as good as Gordon. I'm sorry, sir. She said sadly. James pulled Emily into the docks. 
Then he went back to collect the express. Now I need an engine to take the slow goods train, said the fat controller. Emily had an idea. May I take it, sir, she said, if I promise to go slowly? The fat controller thought it was a grand idea. The slow goods train needs lots of patience, he said. Emily was pleased. She was determined to do a good job. So after she took on water and lots of coal, Emily buffered up to the slow goods train. She stopped at all the right stations. And she let all the other engines go first. She stopped at a signal. Thomas was waiting there. I am learning patience, Emily puffed. But if only I could learn it faster, she cried. Thomas had to laugh. The island of Sodor is surrounded by beautiful blue sea. It has fields of green and sandy yellow beaches. There are rivers, streams and lots of trees where the birds sing. There are windmills and a coal mine and docks where visitors to the island arrive. The island also has lots and lots of railway lines. Who's that puffing down the track? It's Thomas. Hello, Thomas. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the island of Sodor. It was full steam ahead on the island of Sodor. All the engines were running on time. They wanted to finish their work quickly because tonight was Halloween. The engines love seeing the children in their Halloween costumes. And the engines love to hear tales of ghostly engines and scary steam trains. That evening, the fat controller came to Tidmouth Sheds. Thomas and Emily, you must go to the smelter's yard, he said. An important delivery of iron must be collected right away. Yes, sir, they puffed. Percy thought the smelter's yard was spooky. He was worried about his friends. Look out for ghosts, he whistled nervously. It is Halloween. There's no such thing as ghosts, Thomas said cheerfully. It's just silly make-believe, added Emily. And they steamed off to the smelter's yard. The sun was setting and it was getting dark. Imagine being scared of Halloween, puffed Thomas. Oh, the smelter's yard, sniffed Emily. Pa, added Thomas. Thomas and Emily enjoyed feeling brave. But when they got to the smelter's yard, it was very spooky. Oh my, whispered Emily. Oh dear, hissed Thomas. They puffed slowly through the piles of jagged steel and twisted scrap. The air grew hotter and smoke grew thicker. Harry and Bert were lurking nearby. The two diesels saw the chance to scare a couple of steamies. When Thomas and Emily rolled by, they moaned and groaned. It sounded spooky. What was that? snapped Emily. You said there was no such thing as ghosts. Silly make-believe, you said, 
gasped Thomas. Suddenly, a truck began to shudder and shake. Cinders and ashes, cried Thomas. Help, wailed Emily. That's our ghost. Let's get away from here. They didn't know Harry and Bert had been bumping the flatbed's buffers. The two naughty diesels were having great fun. Thomas and Emily pulled up to the smelting shed. They gasped at the ghostly shadows and fizzing sparks. Their wheels felt as if they were frozen, but they had to go inside. I hope the ghost hasn't gone in there, quaked Thomas. Me too, quivered Emily. And they both rolled slowly into the smelting shed. Inside, chains clanked and strange shadows danced across the walls. Must be brave, must be brave, Thomas puffed. But it was spooky. Emily was turning round, ready to shunt some trucks. A great whoosh of sparks lit up the shed. That's my buffers, cried Emily. Emily was scared. She didn't notice the huge white tarpaulin. It fell, covering her from funnel to footplate. The ghost, it's got me! She steamed away as fast as her pistons could pump. Thomas thought Emily was the ghost, and he raced out of the smelting shed. The ghost is after me, cried Thomas. Harry and Burr thought Emily was the ghost too, and they raced away. Thomas was right behind them, and Emily was right behind Thomas. Help! Emily cried, the ghost has got me! Harry, Burr, Thomas and Emily raced towards Tidmouth's sheds. Tidmouth's sheds was quiet and peaceful. All the engines were fast asleep. Thomas's whistle soon woke them up. It's Thomas, cried Percy. Something must be wrong. Suddenly he saw Thomas, Harry and Bert racing into the yards. Stop, he cried. Harry, Bert and Thomas applied their brakes. They stopped just in time. The ghost is after us, whistled Thomas. Percy was scared, but just then Emily raced under a signal and the tarpaulin flew off. That's no ghost, said Percy. That's Emily. The engines didn't feel scared anymore, but they did feel foolish. The fat controller arrived wearing his pyjamas. What is all this fuss and bother, he boomed. This has caused confusion and delay. But, sir, cried Thomas, the flatbeds were rattling. And we heard moaning, said Emily. And groaning, added Thomas. The fat controller looked at Harry and Bert. Do you know anything about this? he asked sternly. It was us, sir, Bert mumbled. For your punishment, you will go back and collect the iron at once, said the fat controller. Yes, sir, said Harry and Bert, and they rumbled away. Whenever Thomas and Emily went back to the smelter's yard, they knew there was nothing to be scared of. After all, there is no such thing as ghosts. It was all silly make-believe. Mm -hmm.